Welcome back to St. Louis as we take a look at the Honda starting goalies. And these guys have played every minute of their team's respective games. Antti Niemi, there you see his uh, outstanding numbers in goal for the San Jose Sharks. And down at the other end, a guy that uh, Ken Hitchcock said this morning really has kind of elevated his game. He's made a lot of very kind of acrobatic second and third effort saves. Yaroslav Halak getting the nod here again tonight. And he also said that there's been a lot more activity around his net maybe than we would like to see. The Blues would like to tighten some things up defensively. That's what Alex Petrangelo just said to Ryan Engblom as we have two high-scoring, high-powered teams. And the Logan Couture line starts for the San Jose Sharks against the Patrick Berglund line for the St. Louis Blues. As Schwartz now tried to slide it across the Toro Psycho, but it's knocked away and back to center ice. You talked to TJ Oshie this morning, Dave, and you asked him if he wanted to be top line against top line, and he said he expected it and he wanted it. Yeah. We'll see how that goes as the game goes. Yeah, he said every shift he would love that opportunity. As Irwin hands it off to his partner, and the puck is cleared back out into the St. Louis zone. Eric Jackman back to get it. Tyler Kennedy, the former Pittsburgh Penguin, playing on this line for San Jose. He's going to be a big help to them. He's a tough guy to play against. we got an offside call here against St. Louis. Tyler Kennedy was a very good acquisition. He's won a Stanley Cup. He's got a lot of playoff action under his belt. He's a good up and down player. He's got speed and team speed is what has really changed for the San Jose Sharks. It started last year at the trade deadline. Doug Wilson, the general manager, makes some trades. They felt they were too slow. They could see they weren't going in the right direction. They are a lot faster with some of the new faces. And Brian, we get the back of line against the Thornton line here on the second shift of the game. Here is Hurdle with a shot to the net that's blocked wide. Burns, the converted defenseman, although he had played pro earlier in his career, ironically in Houston of the American League, where Todd McClellan was the coach, and we get the icing call here, and the faceoff will go back into the St. Louis zone. Todd McClellan's uh, forwards have played extremely well. I was talking to Dan Boyle, their star defenseman, and I asked him about the offense of this team because they are really lighting it up. Twice they've had 50 shots, once they've had 47 shots. McClellan's guys are really going. Dan Boyle said, I haven't had to jump, jump up in the play really. Our forwards have been so good with the puck. We've kept the puck inside the offensive zone. I add to it, but I'm not up on the rush much so far. Shots won the draw, the shot didn't get through. Obeister. On defense for St. Louis, Kennedy back out there for the Sharks, got a stick on it. Now Marlowe sends it back. Kennedy for Logan Couture. He sends it out. Marlowe with a quick shot, changed direction just wide. And Bowmeister now will try to hand it off, but it's intercepted by Marlowe. Stays in the blue zone, centering pass. And good positioning there by Steen. You talked about him being a terrific two-way player. And we see him on the defensive side of the puck. Now on the offensive side, he's in on the four check. Thornton back to help out Boyle, and Boyle, number 22, has it for the Sharks. I thought Alexander Steen was the best two-way player the St. Louis Blues had last year down the stretch and in the playoffs. Yemi leaving it for Matt Irwin. Up the center ice, off the stick of Stewart. Burns tries to collect it for the Sharks and sends it deep into the Blues' end. Leopold is there for St. Louis. Brendan Morrow, a new addition to this St. Louis team. Lost it. A wraparound try by Burns was stopped by Halak. Boy, that was a vicious little shot. I mean, Burns had that kind of slingshot at it around. He got a lot on that one on that wraparound by Halak. Good save. Thornton has a jump over a stick, and Morrow drops it back now. Roman Polak will send it back toward the goaltender, Halak, who sweeps it. Now to Kevin Shattenkirk as the Blues look to come out of their zone. Two and a half gone by. Very kind of carefully played so far as Savoka sends it into the Sharks' end. Shepard takes a hit. Vlasic plays it on the far side. Matt Pellick. Run into by Ryan Reeves. And the Blues regain now inside their own zone. Savoka. Tried to play it ahead, it was blocked by Shepard. He's run into immediately by Jackman as it goes back into the Sharks zone. A classic as San Jose gets a new forward group out there. Pavelski, Wingles, and Matt Nieto. Extra out of Boston University. He's one of the guys that helps change the speed up front, Nieto does for San Jose. Both of these teams, yes, have dominating performances from top lines, but scoring elsewhere. Pavelski is a guy that is dangerous. Over, he talked a lot about him as a shot here from the line. Goes in wide, and Jackman, I think, was shaken up, and 
don't think he has something to say to the official. And a big hit down in the corner by Barasenko on the end zone. That drew a reaction from the Scott Trade Center crowd. Well, it really started with that hit on Jackman in the end wall. He is not a happy camper. He was looking for a penalty on that play. Some choice words for the referee as Jackman went off. Another big hit as it starts to pick up. It was Bacchus that time. Now uh, the defenseman Irwin is Marlowe back on the attack now for San Jose. Couture wraps it in deep. Here's Kennedy looking to the front. And on the angle, that deflects off Halak to the far side. Ball with a shot, missed the net. Now Kennedy again, and Halak had to be careful with that one. San Jose getting a lot of pucks toward the net the last couple of shifts. Here's Kennedy protecting turn, center save. And a big rebound out past the faceoff down at Backus. Sent Steen the other way. Steen against three San Jose Sharks, and it's taken away by Kennedy. And Couture put it up into his bench and out of play. Let's go inside the glass, presented by Capital One. Here's Brian Engblom. These are two pretty big teams. They're also pretty fast, but it's the St. Louis Blues, especially in their territory, who like to dish out the hits. Well, one of them was Jackman. Jackman was on the receiving end. He had dished one out in the neutral zone before that. And then the retaliatory hit coming back there, too, as well by Tarasenko. Jackman is a tough guy. You don't want to get him angry. And so the San Jose Sharks are going to have to keep an eye on him, especially Tommy Wingles, who got a good piece of him there in the corner. Each team with four hits so far in the first uh, four and a half minutes of this one. Sharks able to control the draw. And then hands it off, and it's Hurdle who plays it back into the St. Louis zone. Leopold hands it on the far side. Hurdle gets a stick on it. He was trying to jump around his buddy, Vladimir Savotka. Back the other way come the Blues. And a pass for Stewart to flex to the corner. Good back check there by Joe Thornton. Now Demers plays it ahead and Burns will deflect it into the St. Louis end. Stewart able to clear it back the other way. Boy he hands it off, Sabotka shot. That's knocked down. And uh, trying to control the pellet. Able to get it outside the line, but now Sabotka drives it right back into the Sharks end. Boyle. Hit hard down in the corner, and he stays down. And now the arm goes up for the official. And the player that made the hit, LaPierre's got his hands in the air like, what did I do? But everybody gets together at center ice, and Dan Boyle is down on his back in the corner, and he has not moved. And now Pellick and Reeves. Pellick, one of the few guys on the San Jose team that can handle this kind of stuff. They're not a team that's loaded with this. The Pellick fought Chris Neal in the Sharks game against Ottawa. It was Desjardins that went after yeah. Lapierre right off the bat. Lapierre is bleeding now profusely as he goes off the ice. But Dan Boyle has not moved much since he went down. I didn't get a good look at it. We still have another scrap going on well away from the play. And that's Reeves who yep. is a big, tough customer. In there against Pellick. And Pellick is their tough guy too. I think he had 283 minutes in penalties in the American League yeah, last Worcester. year did Pellick, yeah. He's listed at 6'4", 235. Reeves at 6'1", 225. So a couple of guys that, that can handle themselves. And but, yeah, Dan Boyle, I mean, there is great concern down there. They wheel down to the, for, for the stretcher at the far end right now, right away, to get Dan Boyle off the ice. I was a little blocked out down here so I didn't oh. get a good look wow. that's why yeah he's making the play along the boards and he's he started sort of, to stumble just, yes yeah he started to stumble but then Lapierre comes in and definitely hits him behind in the numbers and he goes in face first I mean right there you got to let right up on, on the hit, top edge of the board yep it, it looked like his jaw went right on the top edge of the boards and then here's what happened in the ensuing melee afterwards the Sharks could see that their guy was down and then he was in trouble and that's the usual reaction. Well, they are taking great care in getting Dan Boyle onto a stretcher and off the ice as we have 14.38 remaining in a scoreless game here in St. Louis. We'll be back after this. Back here in St. Louis, and you can see they still are working to get uh, Dan Boyle onto the gurney to get him off the ice, surrounded by concerned 
teammates took a hit from Maxime LaPierre just as he had released the puck. And it appeared that his jaw made contact with the dasher board as he was going down to the ice. His teammates knew he was in difficulty right away. They were calling for the stretcher right away. He'll get the expert care he needs, of course. They're very careful with any kind of head and neck injury. And that's why they immediately put him on the stretcher and put him out. It's difficult for the players now. It's time to, to regroup, and you, you have to get back playing, and particularly for San Jose, their guy, the one that's down. There's another look at it. Lapierre comes in. He does hit him from the backside, and then the jaw. This one shows it, I think, a little bit better exactly what happened to him it looks as though the jaw the left side of his jaw hit right on the top edge of the boards there so there's five minutes up in penalty time for the st louis blues it'll be a major penalty to uh, lapierre and he'll be done for the night there's a two-minute penalty currently up on the board for the san jose sharks we're awaiting the official announcement of the penalties There'll be a couple of fighting penalties, too, for Pellick, of course, and Reeves. Fans here are the penalties on the play. First for San Jose, number 10, Andrew Desjardins. Two minutes for instigating an altercation. Five minutes for fighting and a ten-minute misconduct. Desjardins got two for instigating, five for fighting and a ten-minute misconduct. and a game misconduct. For St. Louis, number 40, Maxime Lafayette. Five minutes for a checking from behind. Game misconduct and five minutes for fighting. So Reeves and Pellick also got uh, game five misconduct. So we have four skaters aside for two minutes here, and then the Sharks will go on a three-minute power play. As Backus now for the blue sent to the head. Here is Leopold. Looking to the front, steps up for a shot. Yemi, the save, and the big rebound is skated away by Kennedy. Both those, both of these teams, very high-powered, averaging over four goals, four per game. And with the extra ice, you can see that they have a lot of confidence moving the puck well. Now Oshie with it. And they get free for Marlowe's check. Taken by Vlasic. Now Bergman plays it up the far side. Olmeister sends it along the board, back behind the San Jose goal. Picked along by Oshi. Oshi sends it back in deep. Now Oshi will send it back in deep. Bounces off the stick of Bergman on the far side as he rubs into Demir. Now the puck comes free off the board. Picked up by Oshi. Couldn't get the shot away because he was hooked. And a penalty coming here against San Jose. Mark Edward Blasek tried to jump up on the play, but he didn't have the puck. Oh, she was able to jump by him, and it ends up in a penalty for Mark Edward Blasek. Scoreless here in St. Louis. We'll be back after this. Well, T.J. Oshi had that scoring chance denied by Mark Edward Blasek, and Blasek took the penalty. So now the St. Louis Blues have a four-on-three power play. That will last for uh, 48 seconds until the Sharks get the first of their players back. Out of everything that happened at the 522 mark with the Lapierre hit on Boyle. As Stewart now trying to burst his way through it is blocked by Hannon and he bounces it back out to center ice. The St. Louis Blues, 6 for 16 on the power play so far this season. Best percentage 
in the National Hockey League as this puck is cleared by Demers. And San Jose doing a terrific job. There are three guys winning the first face off and getting it down and then playing well at their own blue line. Stewart drops it back. Jack Kirk now hands it off. Roy, patient with it. Far side anticipated by Demers. And it's blocked out to center ice. And Shepard, who was serving one of the minor penalties, steps out and we're four skaters aside. And in another minute or so, Vlasic penalty will wrap up and there will still be a little over a minute and a half remaining in the major penalty to LaPierre, who's done for the night. Burns tried to slide a puck through. It is Jackman who sends it back the other way. Tarasenko now for St. Louis. That deflects back into the San Jose zone. Irwin battling for the shot. Does a nice job with the four-checker Saboka. And it's back the other way. Wingles had it knocked away by Polak. Jackman pass connects with Saboka. Off his stick and the starts back in their own zone. Both teams forwards really sharp on turnovers. They get back and they backtrack quickly on the puck carrier, not just in their own zone, but even the neutral zone. A lot of turnovers forced by the by forwards working hard. Olak sends it across. Jackman didn't get to what he wanted on that clearing attempt, and now Demers steps up into the St. Louis zone, takes it wide, hands it back off now. Kennedy. Keeping it away from Petrangelo. Now, Vlasic out of the box goes right to the bench. He'll be replaced by a power play player, and that is Captain Joe Thornton. who got a stick on it, but it's taken away, and Petrangelo sends it back down the ice. Minute 35 remaining in the major penalty to LaPierre. So LaPierre is done for the night for St. Louis, as is Reeves. You know, this power play for the San Jose Sharks is brought to you by Ford. Jammed along the board. Pavelski got a stick on it, couldn't control. Second effort by Oshi. He sends it down the ice. St. Louis doing what they have to there. They're a man short. Keep the puck along the wall as long as you can. Keep the offensive players facing the glass, and then of course get pucks turned over and get them down the ice. Now Thornton drops it back to Irwin at the point. Goes back to Thornton out of Couture. Oh, he scores. Logan Couture. Set up by Marlowe and Thornton, and on the power play, the Sharks have a 1-0 lead. You can tell they've worked on this play in practice time and time again, because that was basically a no-look backhand pass by Patrick Marlowe. It's a sequence pass, like Lot of Amaro on the power play. Thornton gets it in the middle to Marlowe, and Couture, who's a defenseman, moves in and wants the sequence start. Thornton's along the wall. Watch him pass it in the middle to Marlowe, and then Marlowe very quickly on the back end. He knew exactly where Couture was going to be, and then that's just brilliant shot making there by Couture. Halak comes across, but he's deep. There's room on the near side post under the bar, and he puts it in there. Logan Couture with his third goal of the season, and because it came on a major penalty, the time still stays up there on the uh, LaPierre Major as this shot by Irwin directed right in front of Champs. Rebound is sent aside and another penalty coming against the Blues. Bowmeister knocking down Tomas Hurdle who came very close to getting his eighth goal. Yeah, he got a high stick right in the mouth there, Dave. That's why he's checking. They're checking to see if he's bleeding. Doesn't look like it as he skates in front of me. But Hurdle has been a sensation here for the San Jose Sharks. He gets knocked down. And there's the high-sticking call on Bomis there. So again, another penalty. Another power play here for San Jose. And San Jose hasn't been too shabby on their power play so far this season either. Well, this is the first game of the young season that the St. Louis Blues have not scored the first goal. They are down 1-0 and now facing a 5-on-3 for 27 seconds. As the Rock comes back to Marlowe. He slides it across to Bears. Now for Thornton. Thornton looking to the front. Hands it off. Gets it back. Now it goes out to Marlowe. Save rebound. Tamps in front. Good job by the Blues. To prevent that shot from getting to the net. Now Demers. Hands it back to Marlowe. Marlowe for Couture. Looking to the front. They come back out. Marlowe now to Demers. Demers. Now for Pavelski. Pavelski back to Demers straight away. Score! Pavelski just as Morrow came out of the box at the end of the five-minute major. It'll be a five-on-four power play goal. But Ken Hitchcock's team is down 2 nothing on a couple of San Jose power plays. And you can tell they're stunned right now, too. They are reeling. 
San Jose doing a terrific job of just moving the puck around, looking for openings, and then when it's there, the, pe the trigger is pulled here by Pavelski right in the face-off circle. We see so many goals in today's National Hockey League scored from there. Such a tough area to cover, whether it's five on five or whether a team is on the power play, you're not going to go over and stand beside a guy who's that far off the scoring area. But when the pass is right and the one-time shot is there, really difficult for a lot of goaltender to get across there and hug that near side post. And both of these shots have been pretty much perfect inside that post. And no surprise here, Brian, that Ken Hitchcock has called his timeout. Tom McClellan talking to his team. They have uh, lost a very important player in Dan Boyle, and we will uh, get you any information if it is made available to us in terms of his condition. But both of these coaches, Brian, also have lost a couple of guys to game misconduct, so it will be shorter benches. It will be the trauma of seeing what happened regardless of which side you're on, of seeing a, a player taken off the ice on the stretcher. Yeah. And, and trying, as you said, just trying to regroup and get yourself mentally back into this game. Yeah, and, it, and it's obviously hurt them. I mean, they've taken some penalties, and that's been the obvious problem in the X's and O's, is that they're outnumbered attacks here, and San Jose's ability to move puck on their power play with two power play goals here. But Ken Hitchcock wanted to settle things down. He had to get their attention. They are reeling. Part of that certainly is, is uh, uh, the injury and losing a player, but... You would think that San Jose perhaps would have been the more stunned one because it was their player that got hurt in Dan Boyle. Nonetheless, the onus is on St. Louis from here on in. Here's Berglund with a chance, and he fired it high and wide at the Emmy. Erosenko tries to get it to the front. Winkles picks it up for the Sharks and hands it off. And Nieto starts it back the other way with Winkles. That's into the glove of Hawk, and he will hold it there. We pass the halfway mark of this first period. Shots are 7-1 San Jose. They lead it 2-0. Well, tomorrow on NBCSN, 6.30 Wednesday night rivalry. The Rangers at 1-4, the Capitals at 2-4, but coming off a win coverage begins with NHL rivals. Thursday on the NHL Network, the Penguins and the Flyers. Monday on NBCSN at 6.30, the Avalanche. The surprising Avalanche of the Penguins again coverage begins with NHL Live. Don't forget to download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash live extra. Colorado might be right at the top of the list of biggest surprises oh, this yeah. year in today's National Hockey League so far for sure, especially their defensive play. Olak plays it up the four bar boards and it's out to center ice. Couture has it there. So Couture is third for Marlowe and Thornton on the power play and then Pavelki is first from Demers and Marlowe and it is 2-0 San Jose. That'll be a hand pass there from Kennedy to Braun. David Yaroslav Halak's defense, obviously these are man short situations in both of those goals. Tough for him to move across, but he was pretty deep on that first shot. Couldn't quite get across and get the angle that he wanted. He has played some fantastic yeah. hockey to this point. Just not quite as sharp here today because he's faced outnumbered attacks, quick bang bang plays, a lot of play around his neck in all the games so far, and he's come up stellar, but they've gotten to him so far twice already in this one. Yeah, Ken Hitchcock said it hasn't been clean and pretty for him because yeah. he said we haven't been clean and pretty, meaning the way the Blues have played in their own zone at times. And as Hurdle now sends it across, Brent Burns on the far side. Bo Meester steps up on him. It's backhanded in off the stick of Halak. Now Oshi slides it ahead for Alexander Steen, coming off a four-point performance. And a win against the New York Rangers, a goal and three assists as Emmy has to hand it off here where it's backhanded by Pavelski out the center ice. Winkles comes up with it. Jaden Schwartz checking him. Chad Kirk plays it around on the far side. Schwartz takes a chop at it, but it doesn't come off the board. Now Chad Kirk in a little bit of difficulty. Loose puck out for Pavelski is done. Rebound tip for Shepardson high and wide. That was Winkles on the four check stealing that puck and just dumping it out in front. And part of what we just talked about that not clean and not pretty in front of the St. Louis net. Now Wingles again. Wheels it back toward the front of the net. Pavelski got a stick on it, but it comes free for Schwartz. He overskates. Shepard steps into him, and now it's back for Jordan Leopold. Shots are now 8-1 San Jose. Boca drives it along the boards in behind the Emmy. Weird up the near side, Petrangelo there, but off his stick. Couture hands it off for Kennedy. He starts it back now with Marlowe. 
Couture driving the net. Blocker save. Rebound chance. That is stopped by Halak as well. Let's go back to the studio for an update. Here's Liam McHugh. Dave, thanks so much. It's that classic Eastern Conference showdown. Columbus and Detroit. Daniel Alfredson, 427 career goals, 426 of them with Ottawa. This is his first for Detroit. The Red Wings lead it. One zip. Love that, Liam. Classic Eastern Conference matchup. But oh boy, how about the record of the West against the East so far this season? Just domination by Western Conference clubs. Bacchus under some pressure, able to get it to Roman Polak, and Polak will start it back now for the St. Louis Blues. We trailed two to nothing here on home ice, and been outshot 11 to one. They should join the slate. Dan Boyle hit from behind by Maxim Lapierre, who received a five-minute major for checking from behind, game misconduct. <laughs> on the ensuing power plays, the Sharks getting the two nothing lead. This will be an icing call here against the Sharks. Well, you can call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center and get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC National Games. Never be without hockey. St. Louis has got to regain themselves. They can't wait till the first intermission. They have to start building their game again, get some offense going, put some pressure on the defense of the San Jose Sharks, which obviously are short staff now down to five guys with the absence of Boyle because of that injury. Each team losing two players from their fourth line. Game misconduct penalties now as Schwartz gets away from Demir's pressure. Cycles it back in deep for Tarasenko. He rolls it out in front. Thornton there. That is uh, taken back, though, by Schwartz of the Blues. He turns, finds it across in front of the Emmy. Romeister moved in for the point, but couldn't get a stick on it. Now a big collision. But, uh, that was Berglund that knocked down the San Jose player. A shot right on a save by the Emmy. He holds it there, and will have a face-off in the Shark zone. The best scoring chance St. Louis has had in quite a while. Berglund with that one-timer backing away into that soft area in the upper slot area and getting the one-timer away. Ante Niemi, who's played some fabulous hockey and goal for San Jose. There, see how Berglund backs away? That's a good way to open yourself up. You have to get farther away from the net in order to get a good chance, which is what Berglund did. But it also gave time and room for Niemi to see it and stop it. Now the line of Roy, Morrow, and Stewart trying to get something going in the offensive zone for the Blues. Jack Kirk has it skip over a stick. Leopold hustles over, gets a stick out, but it's taken back by Braun. He realized that Babelski was in there offside, so he just dumps it into the St. Louis end. Jack Kirk angles it off the boards, and Stewart. Roy with a shot that is blocked up on the netting and out of play. Braun and Justin Braun has done a really good job this season playing with Mark Edward Vlasic. They were kind of kibitzing around this morning. Braun saying, well, I don't have any, much experience as Vlasic, so I'm the one who has to go in the corner all the time. And Vlasic said, yeah, you're the kid. You're the kid out there when it comes to games played. Vlasic this year, he's, he, are, he almost misses no games every year, Dave. He will be, have 600 games under his belt by the end of this season. That's amazing yeah. for a guy who's 26 years old. Irwin now for Couture. Puts it into the Blues then, but it's cleared right back out of there by Steen. Taken back by Tyler Kennedy. Hands it off for Marlowe, who's assisted on both the power play goals. And his wrist shot handled there easily by Halak. Patrick Marlowe has made some terrific plays already on the power play. The guy's got great hands. He came into this game with four goals as well, too. But they're just in sync. I talked to one NHL scout a couple of days ago and said, I haven't seen every team in the league, but I've seen a lot. And this San Jose team, he said, for my money, is the best team I've seen in the entire league so far. Now, they are playing on the road, really, for the first time. They had one game up in Vancouver and yeah. had the majority of their games at home. But still, you just win where you play. Jeffords, quick shot. Turned aside by Halak. 
Ken Hitchcock uh, was very complimentary of San Jose this morning. Brian saying their 5-0 record, he said, I think is a, a much more dominating number than our 4-0. Yeah. Just in terms of the way San Jose has won games, he said some of their games have been over halfway through. They've been up three, four, five goals on team. Yeah, they've, they've dominated a couple of their games by so much. I mean, the 50 shot totals and uh, what they've done on the scoreboard at certain times, especially that Ranger game. Todd McClellan said, I'm actually going to sit back and watch a little bit how we react in this game after the games we played at home. Well, Meester shot hit up off the glass, and now a battle for the puck on the near side. And Thornton slaps it out across now for Brent Burns. Burns back for Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle to Thornton. Thornton with a shot missed the net. And a penalty coming here on Burns as he takes the St. Louis player awkwardly into the board. Brendan Morrow, the puck was already gone. And Morrow very slow to get up. Morrow was a couple of feet from the boards and Brent Burns who was had some speed. He's trying to plead his case with the referee now. But Morrow did go awkwardly in. And he is a tough customer. If he's shaken up, you know, it wasn't good. He is in great difficulty as they help him off the ice. Let's see if we can pick up exactly what happened. On the left side of your screen, Brent Burns catches him oh, with wow. the shoulder. The puck was coming around the boards, and Morrow hadn't touched it yet from what I could see. No, he hadn't. Burns comes in and gets him from the shoulder side, but projects him into the wall there, and he can't protect himself. Boy, he, he goes in with the head and the shoulder, and he was favoring that when he went off. A boarding call right now. And the crowd two knowing that it was only two minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, were, they were looking for five there. That was a dangerous play because he hadn't touched the puck. I would say that would be a five-minute penalty as well. Well, it looked like he was going to reach around and try to play the puck, but then uh, realized that Morrow kind of had him screened off and then just followed through with the the dangerous shove into the boards. And so the second power play for the Blues as Marlowe sends it all the way down the ice. Marlowe and Pavelski, the two penalty-killing forwards for Todd McClellan here against this St. Louis power play that had a brief four-on-three opportunity earlier in this first period. He sends it back on the far side. Marlowe's going to get to it. And he'll send it all the way back into the Blues' end. Alex Petrangelo. Sit ahead, and uh, the play whistled down at the Sharks' line. Offside. It is a very strange feeling down here because of the injuries that we've seen the couple of fights that have happened fights happen from time to time certainly anyway but the injuries now it's left sort of a, a pall on the game you look at the players and, and their reactions and this this may take till the uh, first intermission for guys to get back in the room and just sort of regroup a little bit and hopefully make it feel like a more normal hockey game Wingles for the Sharks, now Logan Couture sends it down the ice. Minute 10 remaining in the Brent Burns minor penalty for boarding. San Jose has won a lot of key draws, especially the few times they've been in their own end. Opportunity here, and the Emmy turns it aside off the stick of Tarasenko. Now Steen loads up the one-timer, say rebound, chance to stop by the Emmy. That was Derek Roy that had a terrific chance. Steen, good job keeping it in. The back to Roy Plastic roughs him up. And Kennedy able to get it. Yeah, Roy just couldn't get a handle on that. The puck popped out quickly to him. I don't know if it was flipping or rolling. He pulled the trigger right away, but he only got about half of what he wanted on it. Uh, Marlowe turns back the St. Louis attack again. Oshi right back. And the play whistled down as the Murs hit hard. He did something, Brian, that I didn't see that drew a reaction. Well, he, he came across and he finished the check on David Backus, and it was an offside call. David Backus, I could tell after Morrow got hurt. He looked over at Morrow, and then he started looking down at the San Jose bench. He couldn't really make eye contact because there are a lot of fans in between. So he's angry and riled up about this. So as soon as he felt anything from Demers here, he went right back at Demers. And it was because of the whistle on the offside, Backus was offside. 
He took the Murs down right away. He wanted a piece of somebody. Here's how the play develops. Bacchus right there, just barely offside. And see, there's a little bit of a shoulder there by Demers. He did come up with the shoulder right up on the side of the head of Bacchus. The whistle goes right here. Bacchus stops, and that's what he got angry about. Gives him a shot from behind and certainly wasn't going to get a let him get away with that. The speed game, the physical game, the the puck possession game that we expected to see between these two game teams so far hasn't happened to the same extent because, uh, because of the injury that have happened and because of the atmosphere here and now there's a tremendous amount of animosity going on between these two teams. And an extra minor penalty given to St. Louis on that exchange. Now they've got Stewart's number up there but that may be because he's serving the penalty. Yes, Back has got two and two. Demers got only two, so four skaters aside. The shot to the net is turned aside by Niemi. Brent Burns ready to come out of the box. Having served his two-minute minor penalty for boarding, so power play here now again for the San Jose Sharks, who have already scored twice with a man advantage. And if 40 remaining in the period, as Irwin shot in on Halak, and uh, he wanted to play that puck, but wasn't sure where it was in his equipment. Yeah, it got all jammed up on him. Yaroslav Halak has played so well in large part because he's lost quite a bit of weight. He stayed in St. Louis, stayed in North America all summer long, which he normally does not do. He and his wife had another baby, and congratulations to them on that. Part of the reason there, and he was able to work out an awful lot. Injury plague season last year, and it's really helped him get off to a fabulous start this year. He and Brian Elliott, a terrific tandem for the Blues over the last couple of years, but it's been all Yaroslav Halak to this point. Well, Ken Hitchcock talking this morning that uh, he will get Elliott in in the near future. And got some other players that haven't had any uh, playing time yet because of how well things have been going. And Pavelski now winds up. Doesn't shoot. Then goes to Logan Couture. He lets it go. And that little body in front. Good recovery, though, by the Sharks. It comes back to the line. Pavelski for Marlowe. Pavelski, quick redirect. Gets it back for Braun. Shot to the net. Didn't get all the way through. Blocked by Jackman, and it's the second effort there by Patrick Bertland to send this puck back into the San Jose zone. One minute remaining in the first. Arlo drops it back, mature. Sends it off high slot, gets the return. Sweeps it toward the net, that is blocked by Polak. Mature digs it back to the line, Braun. Now for Thornton. Thornton waits. The feather of pass through, that was anticipated by Samoka, and he sends it all the way back down the ice. One thing about Joe Thornton that you'll say, and I think Jeremy Roenick touched on it, when he starts to shoot, well, he should have shot there. He likes to set up plays, one of the best passers in the game, no doubt. But he should have been pulling the trigger, and he knew it after that. Turned the puck over on a seam pass, and they lost all this time on the power play in the offensive zone. And he deflects this puck in with a dozen seconds remaining in the first period. Erdelin puts the body on Polak, but now it's Tarasenko who slides it across. At for Stewart, that's broken up. Hurdle turns it back the other way. The time will run out in the first period here at Scott Trade. A much anticipated matchup, but things change dramatically with the LaPierre major penalty on the hit on Boyle. And it is a 2-0. San Jose lead the Lexus intermission with Liam, Mike, and JR coming up. They'll talk about the lengthy suspension handed to Coletta. And I'm sure they'll talk about the possibility of a suspension for the hit we saw here tonight. And the Leafs off to a great start up early on the Minnesota Wild. The Lexus intermission report in the studio right after this. And tomorrow on the bench, he, he took that hit from Brent Burns in the first three. See him flexing his neck there, and good to see him back. Also want to make a correction because there was a change in the way the uh, Andrew Desjard penalty was listed on the official score sheet, and then it was changed. He got a 10-minute misconduct in addition to his instigator and his fighting, so he did not uh, get a game misconduct because we have an icing call here to start the period. The faceoff will go back 
out the center ice. And let's go inside the glass presented by Progressive. Here's Brian Engblom. I went and talked to the people on the San Jose side to find out about Dan Boyle. And they said he was reacting. He was responsive when they took him off the ice. He was taken off after this hit by Lapierre. He wasn't moving at first. They put him on a stretcher. And, of course, they took him to the hospital for further examination. But he was responsive. So good news there. Whistle here is the... A lot catching that long dump in, leave it there, so Tom McClellan's club starting a couple of games on the road here. They'll go to Dallas, they go home to play one game, and then go back out on the road to play five, and that's one of the reasons they uh, are going to put on the most miles of any team in the National Hockey League this season. They have a very busy home arena in addition to being uh, the home of the San Jose Sharks with other events going on there. Yeah, I was looking at that mileage too, Dave. They, uh, they'll do 18,000 more miles than the St. Louis Blues, who will do the second fewest in the West. Ron with a shot here. Halak kicks it out. Rebound chance right through the blue paint behind the St. Louis goaltender, but it came out the near side, and the Blues were able to clear as Oshie sends it back into the San Jose zone. Ron gets a stick on it. Now Byrne plays it up the far side and Hurdle with it. Slapped away by Sabotkin up into the seats out of play. I'm not sure how Joe Thornton did not score on that one. He was right on the edge of the paint. The puck comes through. Watch number 19, the right side of your screen. Timing pattern that comes out, hits him in the leg, and he, he just shoveled it through. It was a kind of a tough angle for sure, but it's almost as if he was trying to put it into the paint and uh, make a pass, knowing Thornton. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he was trying to pass to the other side. It didn't look like he was going to handle it at all and try to find the back of the net and just went right through. Yeah, you can see Hurdle coming out from the other side of the net. He may have thought that he'd be there for an easy slam dunk as Leopold drives this one in on Antini Emmy. That's the epitome of thinking pass first when you yeah, have an empty, right. empty <laughs> net, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Stewart leaning on Pavelski. Puck comes back into the blue zone. Leopold slides it across. Jack Kirk now, long pass, and Derek Roy will deflect it into the San Jose end of the ice. Early here in the second period. And it takes a hit from Morrow. And Leopold trying to keep it in. And he will. Leopold, top of the circle, lets it go. Deflected wide. And he came out to cut off the angle. Now Shattenkirk a long shot, and that came outside, says the linesman right on the spot before the Shattenkirk Shot on goal. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet, plus have access to live chats with experts from Pro Hockey Talk. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash live extra and NHL.com. It was Matthew Nieto with a nice deflection there and that, uh, that San Jose chance moving in from the point. Just got to stick out in time and deflected it up and over the net. And we talk about the depth, and I know the guys in the studio have talked about it, uh, Brian, and both of these teams. We consider the San Jose depth when you look at the guys that they don't have in the lineup. Brad Stewart serving the third and final game of a suspension for a hit he had earlier, and then because of injury, Marty Havlet, Adam Burrish, and Rafi Torres. And that's a heck of a line right there as this shot by Braun is turned aside by Halak. Got some skill by Havlat. Havlat. Chance to score some goals. You got Burrish and Torres who both add to team speed. That's very valuable as well. Scramble in front of Halak and a poke at it by Couture, but it's covered up by the St. Louis goaltender. And he will hold it there. In the first period, San Jose got themselves off to a very good start. They were moving the puck around very well even before they scored the two goals. Yes, they had some power plays, but power plays mean your top guys have a chance to work with some extra room. But they had St. Louis that had to protect the middle of the ice, and then that was the first goal and a one-toucher from uh, Marlow to Couture, and then the second one by Pavelski down low off to the side. Both of those really comes down to the goaltender, Halak. Could he get across in time to get to that near side post? And the answer was no both times. Thornton wins the draw. Back to Jason Demers. Sets it back in deep. Rolls all the way to the far side. Shepard right now on this line with Thornton and Burns, not uh, Tomas Hurdle. And Steen back the other way for St. Louis. Pinned to the boards by Irwin. Demers will drop it back. Steen got a stick on it. Now it comes back to Bacchus. Sends it along the boards in behind Tini Emmy, and now Irwin back the other way. 
T.J. Oshie coming to the bench as well, too, after that last collision. He doesn't look 100% either. A deflected puck led to a shot to the net by Nieto that was deflected away. Sharks aren't done with this pressure. Here's Vlasic. Gets it back from Nieto to the net. Changes direction wide of Halak. Acting like he didn't see it go by him. Vlasic again. Wrist shot here. Sails high and wide. Now Braun with Stewart leading on him. Yeto with a shot. That was kicked down low and just wide of Yaroslav Halak. Good pressure here again by this line for the San Jose Sharks as it comes to Nieto. A shot. And uh, Mora was able to prevent that from getting to the net. And Stewart has slowed down in the neutral zone. Now Roy with it. Sends it to the front. Just misconnecting there with Stewart. Sabotka. Angles it off the boards. Now Roy up the far side. Stewart rink wide. Sabotka steps into it. Drops it back. Late man Roy. Too high over the glove of Miami. Now Petrangelo. Blues try to get something going in the offensive zone. They've been limited to just seven shots in the first 24 minutes of this game on their home ice as Kennedy sends it back the other way. Marlowe over skates. And the Blues started back. A Bo Meester. Some people talking about him for Team Canada as a partner with his Blues partner, Alex Petrangelo. Yeah, I think I think they're pretty much a lock. They both move so well. They play together all season long. If they're healthy, I would expect both Bo Meester and Petrangelo to be there. And back the other way, and Schwartz slaps it into the Sharks' end. Loose puck picked up by Schwartz, a shot, and I think Niemi got a piece of that. Goal post. And it went off the post as well, Brian, and back to the line. Leopold, Niemi came out above the blue paint to stop that one. And now Thornton lifts it back the other way. Better offense, certainly for the St. Louis Blues in this second. Yeah, Derek Roy with a terrific chance, and then Schwartz with that quick turnover. Now the puck skips away from Shattenkirk. Hurdle with it. Tries to cut to the middle. And it's taken away by Schwartz. Berglund sends it into the Sharks end around the boards. Schwartz who had that great scoring chance over skates his wingles now for Vlasic. Starts it back with Pavelski and Hurdle. Oshi back out there, that's a good sign after being shaken up yeah, his last that's right. shift. Leopold, that's a back from Shattenkirk. And a penalty coming. Play. I think it was Backus that got involved with Shepard. Yeah. I think it's going to be Backus going to get the penalty now as the Sharks have it. Emmy uh, gets to the bench. Extra attacker is on. Good recognition here by the Sharks to get control of this puck. See what they can do with it. Knocked away by Backus who puts his arm up like, why wasn't that a whistle? He didn't have control. That's exactly right. You can touch it, but you're supposed to have control of the puck technically before the whistle's blown. Now Couture across the line on this delayed penalty. Hoist it across on the backhand. Picked up by Marlowe. Sends it on the far side for Thornton. Thornton goes to Vlasic. Back to Marlowe. He'll let one go. Knocked down in front. And on the touch up by Sabutka. We will get the roughing call on Bacchus. And the Sharks who have scored twice on the power play lead at 2-0. They will have a man advantage after this. On the boards on the left is David Bacchus. He gets the puck, passes it and then protects himself, in my mind. James Shepard comes yeah. in to take him out. Back has got his hands up, though. They called him for roughing. I didn't really blame him in that situation, Boy. to be honest with you. He knows he's being closed down on, and he's going to get hit. He got his hands up. Unfortunately for Shepard, he got shaken up, and he went to the locker room. A chance here, and a glove saved by Halak. As Demers moved in, and boy, you heard JR talk about it. Uh with Mike Milbury about this power play, just how they move the puck around, Brian. Yes, absolutely. Terrific movement. They always want to get it to Thornton. Thornton is so good. And they're moving in sequence. The players away from the puck are getting to holes, and they know exactly where everybody is going before they get the puck. One-timer here. Tip just wide of Halak. Thornton just can't get it to go in. He was the one that was there and got a piece of that and went wide. Now Pavelski with it. Pavelski straight away. Hammers Ooh. one. Up high. Who did that hit? Was it Steen or Jackman? Yep. Hit him right up sort of in the chest area. Oh, yeah. That guy could take more punishment than anybody I've ever seen in my life, I think, Barrett Jackman. Now it deflects into the blue zone. Thornton and Jackman. 
Lasher in the corner. Petrangelo got a stick on it. He skates out of there with it. And now he will send it all the way back down the ice. And the second power play unit over the boards now for Todd McClellan. It'll be uh, Brent Burns and Tomas Hurdle along with Tyler Kennedy. Hurdle knocked down by Polak, and the puck is cleared all the way back into the San Jose end. The Hurdle video, Brian, of that uh, goal between the legs, ranked in the top 15 all-time on NHL.com and set the uh, record for wow. starts in a day with 4.5 million video starts the day after That's he incredible. got the four goal game. It is unbelievable. A shot here is deflected up high and wide of the St. Louis goal. Hurdle's goal was spectacular. Very creative, no doubt, especially on the fly, just instinctive. Now Oshie tried to clear it, could not. Burns lost his stick, gets it back. Now Kennedy tries to get a pass through to Desjardins, so he has served his 17 minutes in penalties, Andrew Desjardins, after he got involved in the uh, fight with LaPierre after the hit on uh, Dan Boyle. In case you missed Brian's uh, report at the start of the period, uh, reports are that Dan Boyle on his way to the hospital responsive and alert. And moving extremities, all good sign. This uh, puck comes out on the far side to Scott Hannon. Dejard knocks it down with the glove, rolls to the corner. Backus is there. Taken back by Shepard. Low sit front. Locked in a nice job. Staying low on Wingles. Laparel, they score! The Sharks got it back. Wingles stayed with it. And San Jose has a 3-0 lead. This is just hustle by Wingles. And St. Louis a little bit slow to react. Halak is down in the first sequence of plays. And he just can't get back over to the other side of the post. Good work by San Jose. Turning pucks over right there in the corner and get it into the paint. And then there's Halak. You can see how far out he is. And the St. Louis Blues just recover too slowly. Wingles wants it. He wants it bad. Again, we talk about the smaller nets and how much easier it is for players to get from behind the net out in front. And this has a, a bearing on that play as well, too. But Halak just doesn't get enough help quickly enough on that short side while he's out of the blue paint. Second goal of the year for Tommy Wingles. Again, he plays on that line with uh, Pavelski, who got his first goal tonight. Matthew Nieto, one of the uh, outstanding uh, rookies on the San Jose team. He has uh, contributed a goal earlier this season. So as much as that uh, top line, especially five on five, has dominated the score, they are getting it from every single line. Well, that's what they all talked about this morning, San Jose. Our balance, our balance, our balance. We have four lines that can go. We got six D that can play. We can play at high speed. We can play any way you want. They're showing it here. Well, certainly has been uh, the formula for the last couple of Stanley Cup champions when you look at Chicago and L.A. and Boston before them. Hurdle shot is deflected by Vlasic and wide. Now Couture sends it back in deep. Tyler Kennedy pinned up against the wall. Now the puck sent to the boards. Couture got a stick on it. Now Couture slaps it back in wide of the St. Louis goal. Kennedy checked by Leopold. Kennedy, though, getting some help. Couture put it in front, just missed. Connecting there with Marlowe. The Blues clear the zone, Brian, and then it, many times the Sharks get it and just dump it right back in. And now the Blues do get a chance to get it down for a shot on the Emmy that he handles easily with the blocker. That one really dropped, though, Dave, and he did a really good job, and the Emmy did. That shot must have dropped about a foot by Stewart because the puck was rolling. It may look easy, but I don't think it was. <laughs> Game looks easier from up here than down there all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Here's Pavelski looking to go far side, and the blocker saved by Halak. Erosenko now on the move for the Blues. Hands it off for Bo Meester, jumping up into the play, trying to get it to the front. It is blocked, and Braun sends it back the other way. Now Nieto with a shot. That was stopped by the left pad of Yaroslav Halak. Nieto with a swipe at it again. And now Tarasenko with it. It's, we have nine and a half remaining here in the second period. All Sharks with a 3-0 lead. And the shot here by Berglund deflected up on the netting and out of play. A couple of power play goals in the first. Couture and Pavelski and then Wingles stays with it on the wraparound. It's 3-0 Sharks. 
Coach, a lot's happened in this game. Uh, before, this morning, you said you wanted to see how your team would react after you played some successful games at home. Then Dan Boyle gets hurt. You look at the overall play, how do you think they've responded? Well, there's been some adversity and emotional swings in this game. I think our, our team has responded well. Uh, we scored the goals on the power play to put them in the hole, and now we've been on our toes, so we've got to do that for another half a night. What did you say to your team after Dan Linder? Well, we think our power play is a form of toughness, so it came back and it scored two goals. That was a good reply, and we really want to finish the night for Boiler. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Todd McClellan in his uh, sixth year behind the bench with the San Jose Sharks has had success wherever he's been. Won a Calder Trophy in the American Hockey League, was a minor pro coach of the year. Of course, was part of the uh, Detroit staff that won the Stanley Cup back in 08. Does this play offside at the San Jose line, and... Something going on elsewhere in the NHL. Let's go back to the studio. Here's Liam. Dave, thanks so much. Flyers, Canucks, Philly, dead last the Metropolitan, desperate for a win, so this is crushing. Ryan Kessler pushes the rebound home. Philadelphia now 1-6. and six. Well, the East continues to struggle against the West and the Metropolitan Division in particular. You know, outside of uh, Pittsburgh, I guess that's the one silver lining for all these teams, Brian, that are struggling. They're, they're not getting too far separated from the pack. Again, uh, it's the top three teams in each division that will qualify for the playoffs and then the next two best records in the conference. Yeah, the first two weeks of the season, you always see a couple of surprises, uh, both good and bad. Teams that just can't get it going and then teams that really surprise you. We talked about Colorado already probably being at the top of that list, so things are still sorting itself out. Penalty coming here. I think it's going to go against Demers for holding. He had lost his stick and it looked like he reached out at the St. Louis player along the boards. And indeed, number five starts the uh, skate over to the penalty box. Yeah, St. Louis needs to get something going here. They need to get some puck possession. Certainly, they're scoring a goal would be the ultimate. But for their top guys to be able to grab this game and really turn it in their direction, they just haven't been able to do that so far. There hasn't been a long sequence really in this game at all where Todd McClellan's guys have really had to defend hard against St. Louis's offense. Top of the line, sails in wide of Niemi. Third, third power play, excuse me, Brian, for the Blues. On their power play, when they win a face-off like they just did, they want to get it to the net within five seconds. That St. Louis is sort of unwritten rule. You win a, win a face-off in the offensive zone, boom, five seconds, get it to the net. That's what Shattenkirk did. Here is Roy, hands it off, Sabotka, fakes the drop pass to the line, he kept it. Got a little separation, hands it off on the far side. Roy does a nice job to stick handle around the referee who was trying to get out of the way. Steam shot is blocked, and it rolls back inside the St. Louis zone. The other way, Steen again. Looks to hand it off to Bacchus. A couple of sticks got in the way. Savoca recovers. Oh, and speaking of sticks getting in the way, Couture stopped what would have been a great scoring chance there for Shattenkirk. Terrific awareness coming back through the middle, seeing who's open. Couture took care of that. Now Steen with a shot that didn't get very far. Roy picks it up on the far side. Derek Roy gets it back to Steen straight away. Hands it off on the near side. Quick centering pass, Savoca. And he lifted it up high on the glass. A minute remaining in the Demers penalty as Couture did not get it by Steen's glove. Held in at the line here, Steen again. Lines up, lets it go, hits a stick. Job by Backus to keep it alive for the Blues. Sends a far side for Roy. Wingles on him. Back to the line for Steen, walks into the high slot. That was blocked in front by Couture. Now Shattenkirk, far side. And the, the one-timer by Roy was blocked. Now back us again for Roy. Backhands it out to the line. Steen with it. Ten seconds left in the man advantage. A one-timer here by Shattenkirk. And get here with thump off the pads of Ed Dinniemi. And it's cleared down the ice. All the layers of shot blockers for San Jose. Terrific. It's like trying to shoot the puck through a clothesline full of laundry. You can get it by the towels, but you can't get it through the sheets. Just high and wide of the glove of Niemi there. Now back to Petrangelo. Petrangelo at the goal line, now behind the net. Petrangelo hands it off for Jaden Schwartz, and it's knocked away, and Desjardins starting it back now. Has Shepard with him. Oh, 
I wondered what laundry you were going to name there, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> the big stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Icing called here as the faceoff goes back now into the St. Louis zone. Well, it all comes down to this Saturday night. The IZOD IndyCar Series concludes under the lights on NBCSM with the MAP TV 500. Don't miss the final race of the 2013 IZOD IndyCar season Saturday night at 8 Eastern on NBCSN. It all comes down between Scott Dixon, the two-time series champ, and uh, Helio Castroneves, a 16-year veteran who has never won the series. It will all be decided in that last race. The chance here for Hurdle was blocked by a lock sent to the far side for Burns. Now Thornton protecting it away from Berglund. Hannon tried to get it deep, and Tarasenko sends it back into the San Jose zone. Icing was uh, waved off there. Joe Thornton is so good in a crowd. He can have one guy hanging on him, skate into two other players, and then attract the ball and spoon the puck to somebody a few feet away. Great in a crowd, Thornton. Now Morrow jams it into the dark zone. Ron goes down. Oshie back to the line. Jackman slides it across. Quick shot here into the glove of Niemi. And Antti Niemi will hang on with 4.50 remaining in the second. It's the Sharks with a 3-0 lead in St. Louis. Saturday morning, NBCSN continues coverage of the Premier League. It all starts at 7 with Newcastle taking on Liverpool. Then at 12.30, NBC brings you West Ham versus Manchester City. NBC Sports, the exclusive home of the Premier League. And you saw some of the uh, San Jose Sharks working on their Premier League skills as so many NHL players do now of warming up with a soccer ball before games. As Stewart takes it in and tries to backhand it to the front of the net, hit a stick. And Logan Couture had to clear the zone, held in by Petrangelo, who fired it wide of the San Jose goal. Kennedy tries to clear. Bowmeister holds it in, slides it back along the board. Stewart backhands it to the front, bounces down to the sick of Oshie, trying to set it up there for Morrow. And Braun got a stick on it. Now Oshie's shot is blocked in front. Back out to Bo Meester, lets it go again wide of the net. He was looking for a teammate to perhaps pick it up off the end board. Petrangelo now for Bo Meester. Bo shot again, intentionally in wide. Stewart sweeps it out to the line. Petrangelo, that shot was blocked. Couture's gone down a couple of times, sacrificing the body. Once on the penalty kill and here at even strength. They are really in the shooting lanes big time. St. Louis really having trouble finding their form, moving the puck quickly enough to get an open bid at the net from any distance at all. Now Saboka drops it back. Petrangelo leans into one in the Emmy. Hangs onto it there. There was a good chance by Petrangelo, and some of the best chances St. Louis has had have been on the rush. We've talked several times already this year about defensemen around the league having to get up in the play because checking is so tight. Forwards come back so well. You can see Couture who was laboring on the bench a little bit, but that last shift it was Petrangelo jumping up on the play, gets a nice drop pass and hammered one at the net. Emmy, who uh, was a finalist for the Vesna last year in the shortened season. The play is offside. Niemi's going to be in that very competitive situation for the starting job for Team Finland and Sochi. I asked him about it this morning. He said, I, I've said this earlier. I, I, he said, I don't need any extra motivation. I want to play well for the San Jose Sharks. If I play well, the team does well, the Olympic stuff will take care of itself. So very focused, very honest. I asked him as we try to talk to a lot of the goaltenders around the league, Brian, how much the uh, change of the pad uh, affected him. He said he locked about an inch off each pad. He said, I, I had to get used to it the first few practices and games, but he said, I don't even think about it anymore. It really hasn't been that much of an impact. He doesn't feel to his game at all. Well, and an inch doesn't sound much like much to, to most fans, but these guys know themselves and their equipment so well. So an inch does make a difference. And of course, where it makes a difference is when they go down the butterfly and those pads come together to take away the five hole. That's the whole purpose of the rule, to make yep. them smaller so it's more difficult and they can't do it as easily. I enjoyed your conversation with uh, your old teammate Larry Robinson about the, how the goalie pads looked in, in the old days when you guys played. Uh, particularly, you're talking about Ken Dryden and how he looked when you look at pictures of, uh, of him. 
Yeah, Ken Dryden looked like he wore shin pads compared to what the goalie pads look like now. And then with a chance, here scores! It goes through Halak! And Halak not happy with himself there. And Scott Hannon, who was singled out by Larry Robinson this morning, talking about different defensemen that are playing well, gets the goal. It is now 4-0 San Jose. Well, we didn't talk to Halak. I'm not sure how much he lost on his pads, but this is a five-hole goal where he doesn't get the pads together quickly enough. That just plain leaks through him. Well sought up again. Had Hannon coming a little bit late on the play. Last year, probably, Halak makes that save. Pads a little bit bigger. They go together easily and more quickly. He does not shut it down. And there's a five-hole goal for you. We've seen quite a few this year. First of the season for Hannon. And again, uh, the Sharks without one of their top defensemen, and Brad Stewart, who served in the last game of that three-game suspension. He'll be eligible to return to the lineup in the uh, Sharks' ne next game in Dallas. But they just don't miss a beat, even with guys out of the lineup, as Berglund's shot here is turned aside by Niemi. And Pavelski plays it off the boards and out to center ice. Thornton and Burns on the assist. Uh, the goal by Hannon that has made it 4 nothing Sharks. Arasenko just missed connecting there with Jaden Schwartz in the high slot area. Now Stewart again hands it off. Oh, she leans on one. Put it up too high. Brendan Morrow. Back hands it out to the point. Omicio slides it across. Petrangelo for Oshie. Couture staying on him. Now Petrangelo comes back to the line, bounces away from Oshi, trying to slow down Logan Couture. Omicha comes over and breaks it up. Couture was at the end of the shift. He's looking to get to the bench anyway. Now Oshi across the line, placed to still alive. It looked a little strange at the line, but it is onside. Now Petrangelo backhands it for Stewart. Stewart looking over his shoulder. Tries to hit Sabotka cutting in, and the Sharks able to clear it back out to center right. Hammered back along the boards behind the Emmy up the far side. Now Thornton chops it back out, and a good hustle by Burns. He had fallen down. It looked like it was going to be a turnover, and he just swiped it all the way down the ice, and uh, will take the icing here. And, uh, David Backus, I think, uh, may have taken a stick to the face behind the play. Backus. David Back has been in the middle of a lot of stuff today, and yeah, he does take it. There yeah. it is. There's an inadvertent stick by Joe Thornton. Catches him right under the mask. Couple of penalties for Backus. The boys in the studio talked about he's got to control his temper. He was angry after the injury to uh, Morrow. Morrow back in the hockey game, and he uh, got involved in his second penalty of the game and a little misdirected in this game. St. Louis has been impressive up to this game. They haven't been able to regain themselves to play the way they have lately. Steve centering back, just misconnecting there, and Burns, who did a pretty good job getting back, but too much of the stick. Yes, he's going to be called for the hook. If there's such a thing as a good penalty, I think the coach would say that's one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he, he saved the goal there, there's no, no doubt. I mean, Roy has had a tough time. Derek Roy has a chance going net. Watch number 12, and there's Burns. You do whatever you have to do. Is that hooking? Absolutely. He got his stick all twisted up in there, right up under the arm. He knew he was on the backside. He knew exactly what was going to happen on the play, and he made sure the puck didn't go in the back of the net. That was a sure goal. Now they have a chance of two minutes to maybe prevent the goal here. Now Vlasic plays it up the far side after the Sharks have won the draw. San Jose's done a nice job in the faceoff circle. Here so far tonight. Well, Especially the in their end yeah. game. Yeah. Kirk able to hold this puck in. Now he hammers one. Niemi the save. Rebound popped up in the air. A little over 60% in the faceoff circle for San Jose. And now the Sharks able to get to it. Send it all the way back down the ice. Omisha with speed. Hammers went up high. Shrugged off there by Miami. Just as the horn sounds to end the second period. Oh, Mr. Jumping up on the play again. We've seen that a couple of times. We've already seen Hannon score for San Jose because of a defenseman coming late. That was a heck of a shot and a terrific save. 
Liam, Mike, JR will have the Discover Car second intermission report talking more about the Sharks' strong power play. And the Sabres still looking for their first win of the season. 40 minutes in the books. The Sharks with two of the first, two of the second with a 4 nothing lead after 40 minutes of play. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. And by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. Back at Scott Trade Center, Ken Hitchcock's team in an unfamiliar position in this early uh, season, trailing 4-0 as we take a look at our storyline presented by DiGiorno. And of course, the storyline starts with the hit. LaPierre on Boyle. Boyle taken off on a stretcher. Reports are he's responding, moving extremities. That's good news. And the San Jose Sharks at the top of the has said our form of toughness is our power play. They responded with a pair, one from Couture, one from Kowalski, added uh, even strength goal from Wingles and Hannon. And the next uh, chapter of the storyline is this. Brian Elliott, first appearance of the season. Brian coming out to replace Yaroslav Halak. Yeah, that's not shocking. You're trying to give Halak a little bit of a rest. Halak didn't have his best day for sure. He didn't get the support he needed, but he... Uh, that last goal, that five-hole goal, that one was definitely on him. And uh, even the power play goals that were great shots, he couldn't quite get over to the post in time. Wasn't as sensational as he had been earlier. So Brian Elliott gets a chance to get his feet wet in the season. Brian Elliott. Now this puck is slapped back into the blue zone. We start this third period with Burns still in the penalty box for the San Jose Shark. The Blues on the power play as Oshie, a little head and shoulder fake, enters the zone. Back to Petrangelo, back for Oshie. Oshie looks to the front. Now lets it go and went just wide of the Emmy all the way back down the ice and uh, Elliott directing traffic there and uh, he'll play the puck. Emmy gets a goal stick on as he plays it to the near side. Steen plays the point on the power play, moves up, and kind of fanned on the pass attempt. And it's sent all the way back down behind the St. Louis goal. You start pressing when you're down 4 0 and things haven't gone well. And you can see that just St. Louis just not in sync, not handling the puck very well and turning the puck over again there on the attack. San Jose done a nice job at that at their own blue line in this game when St. Louis has been on the power play. Jack Kirk for Stewart. Stewart, high slot. Karasenko with a shot that's blocked wide. Burns out of the box has served his two minutes. They're hooking. Remember, that was uh, to break up a scoring chance late in the second. And obviously that is a penalty worth taking because he saved an absolute goal, no doubt, and they end up killing off the penalty. So well done by Burns. Now Burns along the board tried to slap it out. First effort didn't come out. Neither did the second. And now it is sent by Wingles to center ice. Back down by Demers with a high stick, but played next by the Blues, so play continues. Oro sends it to the far side of the Shark zone. Jackman there. So is Sabotka. Hands it off. Out to the high slot. Pollock with a shot. That was blocked. That was Wingles that went down. Boy, they've had some key blocks. 11 after 2, but key all the time. Another save there by Niemi, but really good support in front of Niemi by the San Jose Sharks through the first two periods. Just frustration. Frustrating St. Louis at every turn coming out of their zone. St. Louis can't handle the puck. Big block there on the penalty kill. Now they're again, they just can't quite seem to find any avenue to get open, even when they change the angle of the puck. And then guys like Joe Thornton on the back check turning pucks over. Steen with a quick shot off a face-off win that went wide. He sends it back in deep for back, a centering pass. He was looking for Oshie. And this top line for St. Louis, they're, they're not alone, but they have had very few opportunities, five on five, against the San Jose team. Now it's backhanded up the boards and out the center ice, just out of the reach of Backus. Ron will play it back the other way for the Sharks. And icing the call here.
Ken Hitchcock said that by Friday, this coming Friday night, they would have a lot more information about their team. I was impressed with them last week. They won a game seven to nothing here against Florida, and then had a really tough, big time emotional matchup against the Chicago Blackhawks, which they played very well in, and won uh, in less than a minute to go on a Alexander Steen goal. So they responded well. Now they have a tough game here against San Jose. They go into Chicago and then into Winnipeg on back-to-back -back nights. That's what Hitchcock was talking about. There was a second goal with a shot knocked aside by Niemi. Now Berglund sends it back in deep. There was a second goal. Pin to the boards by Hannon. Now Jaden Schwartz swoops in for the Blues. Yeah, they're trying to get something going in the offensive zone. A quick shot here off the stick of Berglund. And he kind of looks skyward because he realized he missed a great opportunity. Berglund has it again now out near the line. Low shot blocked by Hannon and cleared past Berglund. Back into the St. Louis zone. I think waved off. That's been the story for the Blues as well. I mean, they have created a couple of scoring chances, but they've come away empty-handed. Either misfired or missed the net. Turn over the neutral zone. Nieto back the other way, saved by Elliott. And the puck cleared to the near board. Recovered by the Sharks Wingles. Now Pavelski with it. Pavelski. Sends it to the far corner. Wingles shields his man. Now it's taken away by Petrangelo up the far side, but not out of the zone. Demers with a shot that's blocked. Just jumps over the stick of Nieto. And a long clear for Stewart. Stewart picks it up. Gets the shot away. The Emmy the save. Wasn't sure where it was. Out to his right, but he got some help. And yeah, the Sharks able to clear. That clanked around in his equipment for a second. I thought it was going to leak through them there. Stewart with a good loose puck shot. Roy trying to get it to the front. Goes out to the line. Bowmeister with it now. Slides it across. Put Trangelo. Hammers one here. Missed the net. A backhanded by Vlasic. It doesn't come out. He passed for Shepard. Shepard with a shot. Elliott handles that one easily. Now the Blues on the counterattack. 15-20 remaining here in the third period. The San Jose Sharks have had some big leads in this early season. They've got three 4-1 wins, a 9-2 win. And then, of course, a 3-2 win over Ottawa. Now Jackman taken away by Hurdle. Sets it up. Thornton a shot! And Elliott kind of shrugged, looking for it. Where is it? It's in. It's in. It's underneath the back bar. That was in and, and stayed there. I never saw the net move. Yeah, Joe Thornton came off the bench. And we see that so many times in the National Hockey League. When a fresh player comes off the bench and his team's already in the offensive zone, the defensive team, in this case St. Louis, doesn't sort it out. They don't see the guy coming. And Thornton comes steaming right into the slot area and gets a beautiful pass, controls it, and there's the quickness. It's right up over the shoulder of Elliott, and it sticks it right. Just that's why right. you didn't see it, Dave. It <laughs> stuck right up underneath in the netting there. There was no rebound. Nobody saw where it was. So you thought it was in his glove. I thought for a second as well, but... Terrific shot there by Thornton, who's had some good chances in this game. Well, I saw Elliott look like he wasn't sure where it was, but wow, what a shot by Thornton, which uh, goes back to what JR talked about. You mentioned as well, Brian. He, he should shoot the puck more often. Yeah, no doubt. He is a pass first guy, but in that situation, wow, he just steaming into the slot. It's prime for him. And St. Louis had numbers back, but you have to be looking around away from the puck in order to pick up and see who the next most dangerous guy is. In that instance, certainly it was Thornton. He got it through a top shelf. 22 home games since uh, the Blues have allowed this many on home ice. Well, they haven't even been behind in a game yeah. until tonight's game. They, they've been either tied or in the lead the whole season tonight. Till tonight. Well, Ken, Ken Hitchcock told us, and we mentioned it earlier, Brian, as this puck is taken away now. Morrow gets it back for the Blues, slides it out to center ice. Stewart heels back, hands it off to Petrangelo. Now Bo Meister shot. That was blocked in front by Braun. And Couture sends it back the other way. Marlowe taken back by Petrangelo. But Kent Hitchcock said he, and you never, never know for sure. The coaches are saying it just uh, for the purposes of motivating their team. But he said you know, their 5-0 is a lot more impressive. He felt that than the Blues 4-0, just in terms of the way they've dominated everybody for long stretches. 
That's true, and, and certainly no different here tonight, and they use the power play as their biggest weapon. The Mocha shot was turned aside by the Emmy, and now it's Hannon that will play it up the near boards, and it's you know, to try to get it out of there. It didn't come out. Oh, she held it in, and now Demers will try. It'll be held in by Leopold. Samoka gets a return pass in tight quarters from Steen. Samoka sends it across. Moving up, Jack Kirk and Yemi out to cut down that angle and make the save. And Desjardins could not get it by Leopold again. Hitchcock, understandably, ch changing up his lines an awful lot. And I don't know if we've seen David Backus at all in this third period. We didn't see him much at the end of the second period as well. Joe Thornton with a shot that nobody, maybe other than him, knew for sure was in at first. But indeed it was. 5-0 San Jose. There's a look at the captain, David Backus, and he's been sitting there, to the best of my knowledge, so far this entire third period. I didn't see him much at the end of the second as well. Things have not gone well. He's taken a couple of penalties. I don't think the coach is too happy with him. Uh, Schwartz with Berglund and Karasenko, but this puck is lifted by Thornton, whose goal had one assist, and that was uh, to number 48, Tomas Hurdle. to score goals the youngest since Jimmy Carson to score four in a game this shot here is pass save rebound chance score Tarasenko breaks the shutout and St. Louis finally on the board they now trail it five to one San Jose a little slow to react in their own zone and Tarasenko with some terrific hands the initial shot and save by Niemi is outstanding. You watch how quick Niemi is. There's the turnover right at the blue line. Demers does a poor job. Tarasenko feeds it in the middle. There's the save I was talking about. Terrific pad save on the initial shot from the slot and then off to the left side of your screen. Unfortunately, he kicks the rebound out, but that's exactly where Tarasenko was, and Tarasenko makes no mistake on the rebound. Vladimir Tarasenko with his fourth goal of the season. Now the Blues finally on the board. Trailing by four as Vlasic back the other way. His shot block blew up on the net again out of play. Watch live out of market games with NHL Games that are live. One subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL. Tarasenko's now scored in four of the five games this year. A terrific start last year. A little bit of injury trouble. Terrific skills, great instincts, learning the game very quickly. Schwartz and Berglund get the assist on the goal and a penalty coming here, a holding call. Looks like Shattenkirk is going to go to the penalty box. That, he was fighting along with Kennedy along the wall. And he is dejected, and it takes away a lot of energy here from St. Louis. They finally start to build something, and you can see the looks on the St. Louis bench. Gets the stick wrapped around with oh. Kennedy, pulls him a little bit. Kennedy falls down. That's certainly enough to get it. Power play number six for the Sharks, who have connected on two of five. Demers with a drive. Elliott was there and went just by the outside of the post. Now back to the line, Demers again. Thornton hands it off Pavelski out to Demers. Far side Thornton rink wide now for Pavelski. Band on the pass attempt to the middle, but still recovers. Couture centering pass. Thornton knocked it down and it's slapped away by Jackman. Boy, Couture sees the ice ball. Couture's done so many things so well in this game. He's killed penalties, blocked shots, he's got a couple of points already. Threaded the needle over to Thornton there. Thornton was upset with himself, not handling that one better. Tyler Kennedy lost the clearing attempt. Hurdle did not oh. keep it in. That play is offside. Great instincts and positioning there by Hurdle, too. A bit of a line change, and Hurdle comes out, sees the play developing. That was about an inch or two just outside the blue line, almost kept it in. He was walking right down the throat of the slot. That's not offside. Thomas Hurdle will turn 20 years of age uh, in just a few weeks. Well, interesting for Thomas Hur uh, Hurdle, too that Marty Havlat is the one who does most of the interpreting for Hurdle. Hurdle speaks very little English, but Havlat's hurt. He's not on the trip. Yeah. There's not really anybody who can talk a lot to Tomas Hurdle. 
he understands the game, of course, on the ice. And so the hockey lingo he can get. So when the coaches talk to him with a lot of pointing and talking, it's fine. He knows what's going on. But for the rest of it, got to be a little tough for a young guy. But it's baptism under fire. That's how you learn a language when you're surrounded by it and there's no choice. And there were a few of the San Jose media that were there today and asking him a couple questions. And in, in broken English, he could say a few words, but not a whole lot there. You're right. It is a, a, a tough way to, to learn the language, but he's kind of forced into it. That's the thing about any language. It's tougher to make yourself understood to have enough knowledge of the words than it is to understand yeah. what somebody is saying to you. Al Pavelski back for a long one-timer by Couture. The steer to side by Elliott, who came in to relieve uh, Yaroslav Halak to start this third period for the St. Louis Blues. Thornton, who had the fifth goal, sends it to the side of the net. Elliott saved one. He made a good second save on the rebound opportunity by Marlowe as the puck is cleared all the way back down the ice. What a, what a smart play by Thornton. He came out from behind the net. He was just drawing St. Louis farther and farther up. You could tell by a quick eye... By a quick look, he was going to give it to Marlowe all along, right beside the net. He just wanted to draw St. Louis farther away from him. Now Polak up the far side. Vlasic held it in momentarily. Now with Cole Meester sweeping it down the ice. Shattenkirk comes out of the box. Broke to the halfway mark of this third period. It remains 5-1 San Jose. Dave Strader along with Ryan Englund and the rest of our crew here at Scott Trade Center. And a Tuesday night, don't forget the rivalry night tomorrow night. The Rangers and the Capitals. Rangers continuing their season-long nine games on the road to start the season as the final phase of the renovations completed at Madison Square Garden. And this puck is covered up by Elliott at the side of the net. We'll step away with the Sharks leading by four. Let's watch how Joe Thornton creates time and space for his teammates. He'll hold on to the puck here. Marlowe's going to follow him out behind the net. He's just trying to draw the St. Louis defenders up as high as he can. Does a terrific job and gives Marlowe that extra second for an extra stash play on the short side. Marlowe's pass does a connect and uh, icing is called. That would have been a close race, but again, if the uh, linesmen think it's going to be a a tie that goes to the icing. I mentioned this before, Wednesday night, rivalry night on NBCSN this week. Alex Ovechkin of the Capitals look to avenge last year's playoff loss to the Rangers. Rangers Capitals coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern on NBCSN with the all-new show, NHL Rivals. Some great clips of Many people around the NHL, including players, talking about what it means to play in a great rivalry as this Petrangelo shot is knocked down and it is mature we will send it back into the blues end those playoff games playoff series the last few years between washington and the rangers have been terrific the rangers have had the edge there Ooh, there was a nasty bounce off the sidewall ended up in front of st louis's net and that was uh, david backus who just went back to the bench brian after a shift he put on a pretty good hit right down below us here and center ice says now Irwin for the Shark plays it up the far side. Burns sends it back into the blue zone. Picked up by Shatkirk. Hurdle right on him. Dangerous pass. Now Pavelski knocks it down. Hurdle has a jump over a stick. Shatkirk to the near side for Tarasenko. And Schwartz starts it back. Puts it to the corner. Got Derek Roy there for the blue. So is Vlasic. And the Shark nearly gave it away there. Tarasenko almost walked right into a great opportunity. Tarasenko had to avoid Nieto's attempted check there as it comes to center ice. And Savoca dumps it back into the San Jose end. Demers. Now Burns plays it around. Held in for a shot by Jackman that ends up behind the San Jose goal. The Vodka picks it up. Wheels it back to the front. Save rebound. Chance is stopped as well. Centering pass. Goal. Ends up in the net. I'm not sure if Pollock 
hit this puck or not, Brian? Yeah, I think he did. The defenseman jumped down from the point, and they just put pressure on, going to the net, got some rebounds, and there was a juicy rebound there. Polak was not covered. He had his stick free. I think it went underneath Niemi. The good work down low. Sabotka getting puck to the net. There's Polak getting stationed all alone out front there. He definitely got a good whack at it. But some of the best persistence down low inside the zone that the St. Louis Blues have had. Polak wasn't even sure that it went in at first, but he has his stick free. Nobody yeah. gets to him. Vlasic was late getting there, and Polak puts it in. Yeah, I saw the stick of Burns trying to swipe the puck away from the net. Then it, it ended up in behind the Emmy, but obviously it was Polak that got a stick on it. So a couple of goals for the Blues after falling behind five to nothing. With seven minutes and 15 seconds remaining. And if St. Louis were to get one right in the next minute, minute and a half, they could make this very interesting still. Polak doesn't score a lot of goals for them. He's their defensive guy, their stay-at-home guy, the punishing guy that takes care of his own end. But in this situation, he might as well get up on the play and get involved in just a good old-fashioned hard-working goal. Roy and Samoka with the assist. Uh, Polak's first goal, first point of the season. Now Hurdle pushes the puck deep into the blue zone. But Trangelo's there. Now Hurdle takes it away. Wilson to the front. And a save made by Elliott. And that was on Burns coming late into the play. The terrific save by Elliott. Aichi will be the call here against the Sharks. You talked about Brent Burns earlier in the game, Dave, and uh, it well documented how he moved up to forward last year from defense and made a huge difference according to his coach. He's a bit of a wild Mustang and a free thinker, but his coach doesn't want to limit him too much. He said he's got some great skills, he can turn the game on its ear, and he's playing with Hurdles, who's a smart young player, and Joe Thornton, very intelligent player, so they let Burns go and do what he does best. Yeah, I like how he said he doesn't always play a coach's game, yeah. and he says he still gets things done, so he said maybe that tells us something. Well, he, he played uh, forward in World Juniors, too. Uh, yeah. That, on that 2005 Canadian World Junior team, which they a lot of people say was the best ever, he played with uh, Jeff Carter and Gessler. Now Schwartz rolls it along the board. Braun has it for the Sharks up the far side. Nieto. Plays it ahead for Tommy Wingles. Wingles backhands it toward the net, hit off the side of the net. Irwin plays it back out to the line. Braun dumps it right back in deep. Now play to the boards by Shattenkirk for the Blues, and he lifts it out with just under six minutes remaining here in the third period. Blues have scored two goals after falling behind 5 0. As Irwin. Able to find Tyler Kennedy. Dumps it in wide, hard off the end board. Goes in after it. Dumps it out in front. But Samotka there for St. Louis. And starts a rush back the other way. Samotka wanted to center it. Hit off a stick. And the Sharks unable to get it out of there. Roy sends it across. Good second effort by Kennedy. Made sure it came out of the zone. Now Roy for Samotka. Takes it. Deep, and just over the glove of Miami. A lot of force on that shot came around the boards and out the center right. Stewart with it. Hands it off. Roy put it to the middle. There to side by Demers. Joe Thornton comes away with it. Thornton up on his toes. Hands it off to Burns. Burns with a shot. Elliott stopped that. And we will step away with 4.54 remaining in the third. It's the Sharks with a 5-2 lead. The third straight year they've met in the postseason. You see the same face so many times you're battling against them. Elvinchkin with a big hit on the ground. Defeat the Washington Capitals four games for three. We hate them. They hate us. Yeah, looking forward to that tomorrow night, and it adds a little bit of fuel, Brian, that both teams are struggling. They yeah. have a lot of incentive to try to get their young season turned around, and uh, official spotting something and watch this face off over again, I believe. Alexander Ovechkin off to a fabulous start, filling the net. 
Washington struggling to get some wins, though, and the Rangers, of course, in that nine-game road trip to start things while Madison Square Garden is still under construction. Boy, have they struggled mightily out there. And the latest uh, version of NHL Rivals will air right here on NBCSN at 11 Eastern. After we wrap up our coverage of the game here tonight between the Blues and Sharks. Steen for Oshie. Oshie with a shot, fired it wide on the far side. Joe Thornton able to clear it back out to center ice. Frantillo dumped it in and a bouncing puck. Yemi is able to handle it, but the Sharks fail to clear. A bouncing puck goes in just wide of the San Jose goal. That was Braun who made the save, but it went off of him. Yemi didn't know where it was. Now it's lobbed back out to center ice. San Jose naturally has sat back a lot since they made it 5 0. Now it's 5 2. They've lost a lot of their pop. That, that happens a lot when you're rolling along well and you're scoring goals, and then you sit back, you lose that feel, and you don't just automatically step on the gas again. So they're just going to protect this 5 2 lead, and it, it should be enough if they're playing the right way, but St. Louis is able to muster some pressure because of it. Will this be icing? Uh, yes, they are going to make the call. And you know, Todd McClellan talked about that too this morning, Brian, when he talked about a lot of his games, that the games that his team has played. They've had such big leads. He said they've kind of turned into like exhibition games, and we've lost a little bit of our edge because we've been, in, in, you know, in front and in command of yeah. so many of these early games. I think he said in the New York Ranger game, Joe Thornton played like 11 and a half minutes. He said, yeah. when was the last time Joe played 11 minutes in right. the game because they were so far ahead? It just turned into one of those routes. We got a little bit of John going back and forth here with Stewart. And who's that? Vlasic. Vlasic, yep. Stewart goes right at him. It comes out to the line. Yeah, he gets a stick up on him a little bit here, too. And I think Stewart, uh, he's going to get another piece of him. Yeah, you can see that was coming. Stewart. Stewart wants to go with Vlasic. Vlasic's not going to fight Stewart. Stewart is one tough hombre. He got his stick up a little bit on Vlasic. Vlasic made the play along the wall, and they kind of double teamed him. St. Louis did. Stewart's frustration is pretty much the epitome of, of St. Louis's and the way that their game has gone tonight. I can understand his frustration and why he'd want to do it. Vlasic's just going to walk away from it. He's got nothing to game. Here's the, the words that went on at the face-off circle. And then that's where he got the stick up. And he's just waiting for another chance. There's his chance. They double-team him. He and Sabotka and Stewart already has the stick down and ready to go. Slashing the call on Chris Stewart with three and a half remaining here in the third period. Pavelski wins the draw. Demers hands it off on the far side. Couture. Deflected puck comes out to Demers. He lets it go. Just missed it high on the glove side of Elliott. Now Pavelski again. Hands it off for Demers. Straight away. Long range shot by Marlo Save. Rebound. Chance up over top of the net. Couture on the backhand had an opportunity there. Marlo keeps it alive. Now Marlo. Logan Couture on the far side, back to Patrick Marlowe, back to Couture. Couture centering pass, blocked by Elliott, picked up Marlowe, scores! Patrick Marlowe, who has two power play assists, looks like he's added a power play goal here. And the Sharks with a 6-2 lead. That would just handcuff Brian Elliott and constant motion on the power play for San Jose. They've, they've done it all season long. They've done it all night long. And when you have early success, it gets a lot easier to do it. Ken Hitchcock's guys just not being able to get in the shooting lanes or get loose pucks quickly enough. It starts with their face-offs, and they've been masters in the face-off. They were nearly 70% after two periods. Couture started that play, went out to Marlowe, and he shoots at the back of the net. Fifth of the year for Marlowe. Logan Couture gets credit for the assist. And the San Jose Sharks well on their way to a 6-0 start. And the guys talked about it at the pregame show in the studio. That remember, San Jose got up to the 7-0 start last year. And these guys know it's a long season and still a lot of things to, to go through. But they have been impressive 
perhaps the most impressive in the league as Hannon hammers one here that misses everything. Two minutes left in this one as Barrett Jackman has it back now at his own blue line. The center ice dumps it along the boards behind the Emmy. Moves it for Hannon up the right side. Kennedy off the wall with it, doesn't come out. Here's Roy, sends it across, but Kennedy got back on Samotka. Kennedy now for Wingos, trying to get it back to the front off the skates of Pollock. He went down to cover as much area along the ice as he could. And Braun will send it back into the blue zone. Now for Stewart, drops it back for Pollock. Boards for Petrangelo. Across the line just off the stick of Berglund. And it's hit back out to center ice. One, two, one, two, three, three. And the Blues into Chicago and Winnipeg, as you mentioned, Brian. And then they're going to head to Charleston, South Carolina for a little uh, team building exercise. But as uh, Ken Hitchcock said uh, this morning, you, you build your team when you're winning. That's the ultimate yes. in team building. That's right. It's tough to teach a team that's losing all the time. You, you don't build it. That's right. You're constantly trying to correct things. And that's different than building. Colby sure with a bouncing shot in the Emmy with a save. Now Kennedy, patient with it, hands it to Burns. Burns gets enough on it to get it to the line and now follows up. And will just backhand it into the blue zone for the final 15 seconds of this one. And, of course, most of the concern in the San Jose room will be the status, the health of their teammate, Dan Boyle, who went down because of that uh, vicious hit from behind by Maxim LaPierre. That changed the entire tenor of this game as the Sharks answered with their power play with a couple of goals in building a 4-0 lead, eventually winning this one by a final of 6-2. Coming up next is NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light. For Brian Engblom and the rest of our crew here at Scott Trade Center, I'm Dave Strader.